way is actually better. Nobody will tell you that because the reports have been scuttled, but it's better than chemical fungicide. And you really can drink it. <laughs> you see, that's the nice thing about it. You can have whey on your hand. Hey, this is safe. You think, how is it safe? Well, this is food. You can actually drink this stuff. Try drinking the chemical fungicide. There's rain expected tomorrow. So this is the ideal. This is the best time to be spraying whey just before a rain. Why would I use whey? Not just because it's way better. Yeah, I got the pun. It's great stuff. It's better than fungicide. How can that be? It isn't a fungicide. It doesn't kill the fungus. I'll explain how it works, why we've been using it, how you can try using it on your fruit trees or in your orchard especially. Whey isn't a fungicide. It actually acts on the leaf surface by outcompeting for the food that the fungal spores as they germinate need to grow. Does your dog lick up the spray from the fungicide? <laughs> My dog loves whey. So get this. Uh, I don't have a tree leaf, but imagine a blade of grass. You see, it's, it's a leaf surface. And on this surface of the leaf, there are exudates, they're called exudates. It's sugary substances that are exuded on the surface of the leaf. It's very small, but they're there. And they're the right size for spores to eat when they germinate. Now imagine, tomorrow we're getting a rain. During that rain, the raindrops beat onto the dead leaves, the dead leaf. So imagine on this leaf, there's scab, sp scab from last year. So this is the way the diseases, all diseases overwinter in our climate, on a surface of a leaf or on the surface of the bark. And then when the rain hits them, pow! The sacs, they're called ascos, there's a technical name, I'll write it down what the name of that sack is. It's like a, a sack that when the leaf, when the raindrop hits it sufficiently and it's wet enough, it explodes open and it spews out literally millions of spores, or at least on one leaf, it's thousands of spores, microscopic spores that now are released into the air and they fly around and they land on the leaf surface. This isn't a tree leaf, but let's say it's a tree leaf. They land on the leaf surface and then they germinate, just like any seed. A spore is a fungal seed, if you like, that gets ready to germinate. They germinate, they send down a root. Their only reserve is to make one little root, if you like, a hypha. From there, they then need to feed on the sugars that normally are on the leaf. Well, ah, amazing, great thing about whey is it also eats these sugars. How does whey eat the sugars? It's not really the whey, it's the bacteria in the whey. You know, to make cheese, you have to inoculate milk with a bacteria to cause the globules of fat to join together. Those bacteria that are put into the milk are found in the whey because what happens is after the cheese has coagulated, you drain off the liquid, which is what's left of the milk after you take out the fat, which is the cheese. And that whey now has all the bacteria that have multiplied to produce the cheese. So my tank is just emptied. Then those, where was I? Yeah, so those bacteria on the leaf, they eat those sugars. And by eating the sugars, now on the surface, temporarily, not forever, but temporarily, there's no, or not enough sugars left on that leaf surface to allow the spore when it lands after the rain 
to germinate and grow. It will germinate, but it will die because it's got nothing. It's done with its reserves. It's put down its little first root, if you like, and then it has nothing to eat. And so the fungal, the disease spores die, but the whey and the bacteria remain on the leaf surface. And this is how whey is even better than chemical spray. Because if you have a 24 hour rain of a sufficient intensity, the rain will actually wash every, all the chemical off the leaf surface. And I've heard of orchardists who during a 24 hour rain, they have to go out every eight hours to spray. Can you imagine spraying your trees in the rain every eight hours? It's anyway, that's what they do. But the beauty of whey is it's sticky. If I plunge my hand into the whey, and you see that's the nice thing about it, you can have whey on your hand. Hey, this is safe. You think, how is it safe? Well, this is food. You can actually drink this stuff. Try drinking the chemical fungicide. Oh, quite salty. Depending on the batch of cheese that was made, more or less salt. But yeah, don't try this at home if you're gonna put a fungicide, but you can do that with whey because the guy who taught me how to use this, he said we should actually be throwing out the cheese and drinking the whey because all of the protein, all of the vitamins and minerals are in the whey. They're no longer in the cheese. Cheese is fat, some calcium, there are some other things, but mostly it's the fat while all the nutrition and the protein and, and the sugars are found, the okay, sugars are pretty well eaten up, they're found in the whey. I'm not a biochemist, so some of you will probably correct me. But I, I know that one thing that happens in the whey is the acidity keeps going down. It gets more and more acid the longer you keep it. So we're getting a, fre this is a fresh batch. We keep it for up to three weeks, depends on the temperature but at this time of year it's pretty cool at night we've had frosts every night for the last week it will keep really well for two to three weeks we'll usually use it depending on the rains we usually use it up by then i want to show you how we spray it off i go for the first round of spray all set up all filled up So that really explains to you, hopefully, the, the mechanism. How can whey work better than chemical? Oh, did I say it sticks? I can already feel my hands sticky. Because as, as the water dries off, what's left is, yes, there's still some sugar on it, and that sugar becomes pretty sticky. And that's the power of whey, is that ability to stick onto the leaf. And that's the power of whey, is that ability to stick onto the leaf. The chemical sprays, they add things to try to have them stick a bit, but whey is naturally sticky. And so if you spray a leaf that is open, that is fully sized and that opens, one time in the season, that leaf does not need to be retreated for the whole season. Whoa, 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 let me say that again. Yeah, if you spray whey onto a leaf, that leaf won't need to be resprayed for the whole season because the whey has stuck to it. The bacteria are on the leaf and it's alive. So that's how whey works so much better. In a year where people are spraying 15 to 20, even 25 times, if I spray six times, I get very adequate coverage against fungal disease. Now, if you know a little bit about what I do in the permaculture orchard, you know that I'm not looking to really enjoy having to spray. No, I don't want to spray. And that's why in our orchard, I like to use disease resistant trees because that's the basis. Use disease resistant trees 
so that you won't need to spray. And then we have a, what's left of the old organic orchard, which is commercial cultivars, which aren't resistant to, to scab. And we have some plum trees that are not resistant to black knot. So spraying away does the job. It does it actually more than does the job. It does more than does the job. Did I say that? It does more than doing the job of preventing infections of the fungal diseases. Now here's the point, the kicker. Now here's the point, the kicker. It's like a weed and feed. It will inhibit, not kill, it will inhibit the fungus from getting established and it's a foliar feed. So I haven't fertilized my orchard for 13 years. You say, well, how do you have a commercial orchard and not fertilize? Well, we have nitrogen fixing trees. We do soil um, crimping of grass. Anyway, we do a few things that help improve the soil. And this is sand soil. But the way gives a really nice boost. If I spray six times in the year, I can tell because the leaves change color. They actually get greener, rich and green. One, because of all the calcium they're getting. Uh, but there's other things in the way. If you look it up, you'll see. And there is research. Maybe I'll put a link. There's some great research done in Australia now showing using whey in vineyard. Now, listen, I would love that we no longer use chemical fungicides. I would love it. People will still use it, I know. But here's the truth. There is more than abundantly more, I mean a whole lot more way produced that isn't used, that is not even transformed, that a lot of times it's dumped, that goes to waste, that could be used. There's more than enough way to spray all of the crops that are getting fungicide. Now, let me say that again. We could replace all the fungicide with whey and we'd still have an abundance of whey. Do you get that? And the nice thing is most of the time whey is free for the asking. At most you would pay for trucking. I, I pay for the, the just the transport of it here. That's it. And and so it'll do you it'll do the effect of the fungicide and it's a foliar feed and it's almost free wait a minute and you use it less often because it sticks so if instead of spraying two or three times in the rain you'd only spray once before the rain and it sticks and it stays wait a minute yes it is better almost 25 years ago we tested way in this orchard with a few other organic orchardists because this was a monoculture apple orchard we converted it but it was a monoculture apple orchard and when i learned about way i got so excited i got a guy who i went to see the guy who told me about it and i said you gotta get you gotta get something done this has to be checked because it is this is incredible so we got the government to do a research study on way and the researchers conclusion was wow this is as effective as conventional fungicide now like a lot of great discoveries we can't even get that report today maybe through access for information but i wouldn't hold my breath for that why because let's just say there's a lot of money that could be lost by certain interests and they're not interested in having this be known if you spray fungicide and you're curious i'd say just do an area just do a part just do a block do a test try it out spray at the same schedule as you're spraying your fungicide except don't have to do it two or three times in a rain try it out do a side-by-side -side test one block one block make sure you spray clean your sprayer properly before you put whey because you're going to kill the bacteria otherwise and try it out imagine the money you will save the time you will save you'll save on fertilizer you'll save on fungicide you'll save on fuel you'll save on time 
and most importantly you will save on your health imagine you can spray ice spray in my t-shirt when it's warm no more having to be in a covered air-conditioned hepa filtered cab you can spray i get covered in way the back of my neck is so sticky after i spray it's okay i smell like cheese the whole orchard smells like cheese after i spray but i'm safe my kids are safe my customers that come to you pick are safe there's one caveat i would say is if people who are eating your fruit are absolutely lactose intolerant they may have a reaction to your fruit you say well we can't control that okay maybe you can't maybe you sell it direct just let it be known to people that there is whey on it there's lactose on it but other than that this this is it's certified or it's organically approved product to use and the only other thing is if you get it test the ph because you can actually burn your leaves it's it's at about it's sometimes less than five even now on to 4.5 ph and if you spray a lot you can russet we've had russeting on our fruit and the leaves oh too much acid yes it could be too acid and if you spray it on your grass it will work as an herbicide but i didn't tell you that because it can be acid enough that it will actually set your grass back but what i do is i temper it with some dolomitic limestone and i usually put in about for a thousand liters i'll put in half a bag which is about 15 pounds and that's good for more than one batch it's just to change it's to buffer the ph so your ph instead of being 4.5 or 5 it will be closer to you want it closer to six and then yeah put it on spray it on all kinds of benefit to using whey it is way better than the chemical version do a test don't take my word for it try it out find some and i don't know if all ways are equal but oh i didn't say i didn't say how i spray it at a hundred percent i do dilute it if i see that well okay i won't have enough left to do a whole spray so i'll cut it back to 50 percent and that works fine the australians have done research in vineyards and they found as low as four percent concentration i don't know if i want to try it with four i mean they they researched it they tested it against mildew it worked it was effective in vineyards on mildew as low as four well four percent you know how little i would need to transport i could bring in 20 gallons not even 10 gallons 30 liters yeah about a seven gallons and i'd have enough to do my orchard so try it pure try it 100 percent if you can get enough of it because of the foliar you're feeding it's well worth it try it out in the comments leave your comments if you've tried it i know people have tried it and they are absolutely thrilled with it thanks for watching intrigued check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard have trees already pruningcourse.com subscribe please check out some of the other videos or playlists there's more to come stay tuned bye try it out let me know how it worked i wish you great health thanks for watching bye